My name is Glenn Esser. I've been with Ruskin since 2006. I'm an applications engineer here for the air measurement products. My responsibilities include Ruskin's air measurement products and technical support for the field service group. I've been a member of the AMCA 600-16 review committee uh, responsible for the application manual for AMCA 600-16 for AMS. I'm also a member of the review committee for AMCA 611-15, the certified ratings program, and um, also a review committee currently in taking place for the uh, AMCA 610 laboratory methods for testing and monitoring uh, airflow, uh, testing airflow uh, measurement stations for performance ratings. And most recently, I've been working on this product, the TDP 05K, and bringing to you our new uh, Airflow IQ series. So during the presentation today, um, you'll have an opportunity to uh, type in questions uh, using the chat box or the question box on the right hand side of your screen, or at least it's on the right hand of mine, you may have moved it around. Uh, so please ask questions on your keyboard. Uh, or we uh, really appreciate that. It keeps it interesting. We'll try and get to uh, as many of those as time permits at the end of the presentation. If we can't get to you, I'll uh, certainly respond via email. So thank you again for the uh, opportunity to be here today and for taking the time out of your schedule to be part of this. We really appreciate that. Um, our commitment is we're not going to waste your time today. Uh, we have a great product. We really uh, as I mentioned, appreciate you being here. Uh, the TDP 05K Advanced Thermal Dispersion Air Measurement System has some new features and options, and I'll quickly review the top features of the product that have made it the most specifiable product and the number one choice for building design engineers and building owners. Um, we've added uh, an online placement tool and want you to see what it looks like and where to find it and explain how to use this new placement tool. Uh, special thanks and shout out to our uh, rep, Jim Karanopoulos with h &B Products for this great idea and for all your help bringing the placement tool to life. Um, insertion mount is by far the most common mounting method, but we also have standoff mounting and internal mount. Uh, we'll explain when to use each and uh, what you need to order <clears throat> in order to make that work for you. The Airflow IQ uh, is uh, based on our new T uh, is based on the TDP 05K uh, in combination with a Class A uh, low leakage uh, damper, our CD, our pardon me, our, our uh, yes CD50. Uh, we're also working on a new uh, velocity pressure version based on the uh, AMS 050 that'll be introduced this fall. Uh, the next five slides are just a, a quick. Uh, recap of features before we get started. Although many of you are already familiar with this great product, um, uh, some of you might be seeing this for the first time. And so I just want to give a basic description of what the uh, advanced thermal dispersion probe is for, like I said, those that haven't seen it before. Uh, the TDP 05K has two 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, and uh, they, each output can be individually configured for velocity or temperature. Uh, BACnet network interface is standard to facilitate direct connection to any automation system that supports BACnet. Uh, the TDP 05K can uh, have up to eight sensors per probe, and uh, the maximum probe length can be 120 inches or 10 feet long. Uh, the TDP 05K can have up to 16 probes per air measurement station uh, for a maximum total of 128 temperature and air measurement sensing points per station. Uh, this means we can accomplish true equal area sampling and we're not limited by just four probes or 16 sensors. Uh, with this new product, it is now possible to actually identify where the air is flowing in the duct in real time. Uh, the airfoil shaped probes are acid etched and clear anodized. The thermistors are designed to withstand wet or harsh environments without deterioration and the sensors maintain extremely accurate uh, and uh, are temperature compensating within the tire operating range of minus 20 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And we network all these probes together with a simple twisted pair uh, uh, non-proprietary wiring 
terminated on Phoenix type connectors. Uh, so lots of cool features there. The um, uh, each air measurement station has a primary probe and almost any number of ancillary probes. We have a maximum of 16. Um, so we can, uh, we, we can put enough sensors in any uh, size opening to make any bad location better. Um, the uh, temperature is a calibrated point with offsets if necessary to make it match uh, uh, T and B. Um, the, uh, each probe, uh, primary or ancillary, as I mentioned, can have eight sensors and um, a remote uh, graphic user interface is available to duplicate all the features and functions of the primary probe. Ruskin's state-of-the-art air measurement products can be configured in several different ways. We make it easy for you to pick the right combination to satisfy almost any requirement, but a lot of these options have been confusing and we're trying to remove some of that confusion here for you. The uh, new Airflow IQ series combines, as I mentioned, our uh, TDP 05K and a CD50 damper in a sleeve to make a, uh, a single unit, factory assembled unit. Um, this uh, sleeve is 15 inches deep in the direction of airflow. Ruskin makes both the damper and the air measurement station and we build this in uh, single section uh, dampers. That means uh, the smallest size is 12 by 12 uh, up to 60 wide by 72 inches high. So that's 90% of our air measurement stations that we've sold in the past are that size uh, or within that size. So uh, to use this product you'd order actual size, double flanges to be bolted onto the duct work or into the opening and uh, extended shaft for the actuator and that's how it works. And that would be air measurement uh, controlled by others. All right, this is the Airflow IQ we'll be showing at the ASHRAE show uh, next year. It has, as I mentioned, a TDP 05K and a CD50. In this configuration, uh, the building automation system reads the air measurement from the TDP 05K and controls the dampers, uh, and controls the damper actuator to maintain the desired airflow. Again, this is called controls by others. Uh, we can provide <clears throat> any brand actuator, uh, factory mounted uh, prior to shipment. We have both a velocity pressure and an electronic air measurement uh, placement guidelines. The, uh, <clears throat> since we're talking about the TDP 05K today, the advanced thermal dispersion air measurement system, uh, we're, we'll be using and talking about the electronic placement guide. Uh, placement is shown here in inches or D, uh, some multiples of D, uh, which, uh, w what is D? D is simply the um, average of the width plus the height uh, divided by two. It's really simple. Uh, there's no square root, no pi, no higher math. Uh, okay. We're dealing, we're not dealing with equivalent area or uh, duct pressure drops, so it isn't that, uh, uh, we, we don't have to be that precise. Close counts and as always, more space is better. So. D is just the average of the duct width and the duct height. So easy to, easy to do that, we hope. So both the velocity pressure and the electronic placement guidelines show locations that would be suitable for outside air measurement behind a hood or a fixed louver. Uh, the big difference here is that the electronic uh, probe placement uh, uh, shown on the right uh, shows the position of the sensors uh, the, the probes need to be inserted 12 inches behind a fixed louver. Uh, that's uh, easiest to accomplish by adding a 12 inch sleeve to make that happen. Uh, the big difference here is that the uh, velocity pressure on the left is only four inches behind a fixed louver. So with the electronic air measurement, we need to be farther away because air movement is picked up as air flow. Uh, velocity pressure, on the other hand, only reports airflow in one direction. So electronic air measurement uh, works uh, better if the probes are further away from the uh, louver, as is shown in these uh, placement guidelines. So Ruskin can provide the TDP 05K with a sleeve. Uh, air measurement probes in a 12 inch sleeve is an enhancement that uh, Ruskin has available. The uh, uh, Probes would be factory installed. It'll ship as an assembly 
to reduce labor and simplify installation costs. The, the TDPO 5K uh, would be ordered as a NEMA 4 for outside air, uh, outside installation, uh, and a remote wired primary is always our recommendation when installing air measurement out, outdoors. Uh, the primary can be installed up to 500 feet away from the air measurement station using twisted shielded pair or the connect air wire we call out in our installation manual. All right, the really small print at the bottom of this uh, installation guideline says your mileage may vary. <laughs> no, what it actually really says is that if you follow these guidelines, then uh, it's possible to get an installed accuracy of uh, as good as plus or minus 3%. Uh, it's important to be aware that the air measurement in an outside air opening can often be affected by prevailing winds because as we explained earlier, uh, movement in or around uh, these highly sensitive electronic sensors can be reported as an airflow. Uh, the TDP 5 k has features and settings that make it possible to compensate for these uh, expected conditions or less than desirable locations. So again, uh, more sensors can make uh, any bad location uh, better. All right, the uh, where is the placement tool? The uh, probe placement uh, location, of course, is the best place to put the probes in the duct for any given set of co conditions. Uh, with our new um, online placement tool, we can help you find that location. But first, as I mentioned, you need to find where the tool is. So uh, when you go to the uh, uh, TDP 05K uh, and you click on tools, at the top of the page, you'll get a drop down box like this, and you simply click on the TDP 05K placement tool, and that will take you to the, uh, uh, to the tool. Also, uh, you can click uh, at this line at the bottom of the product features overview here, and that will take you to the placement guideline. Either one of those, and you'll end up at the same place here, which is our um, online placement tool, and this is what it looks like. Uh, and from there, it's just as simple as um, one, two, three. Um, uh, and you see the numbers there on the left-hand side. So what you're able to do here um, is put in the size of the duct that you're dealing with. And in this case, it's a uh, 22 wide, 39 inches high. And I have uh, available uh, 10 feet or 120 inches of straight duct. And um, first thing it tells you uh, is that uh, equivalent duct diameter is 30 and a half inches. Uh, and it also, which is kind of a handy feature here, tells you how many probes and how many uh, sensors uh, will be on each probe. So right here, it's telling you four probes with two sensors on each, uh, uh, each probe. Uh, next, you use the uh, pull down arrow on the uh, number two there to use the, it says unveined elbow here in this example, use the pull down arrow to select uh, what is upstream from the air measurement station. And uh, when you pull that arrow down, you'll notice it never says infinitely long straight duct. Um, and then the uh, last thing is you, uh, uh, number three there, you select what is downstream in term, uh, from the air measurement station. And the placement tool will then uh, calculate the, the best location for the um, air measurement station and tell you where to put the uh, X on the ductwork. In this example, we have uh, more than the required minimum, so it gives two answers, uh, 91.5 downstream from the unveined elbow or 103 inches uh, because you have more space. And as I mentioned before, more space is always uh, better. Um, it's a neat tool and uh, I think you'll find it really useful. All right, um, next thing I wanted to cover, uh, we've got um, a lot of confusion with some of the features that are possible with the TDP 05K. So let me explain uh, some of these differences. Uh, first of all, if you're replacing an existing air measurement station and it had a transmitter box connected to the probes, then you probably want a remote uh, wired uh, primary as the uh, uh, available option. And uh, I'll try and elaborate here on what those differences are. So this is a primary probe. It replaces the functions of the transmitter box. The primary is always the automation interface. 
Uh, in this case, you're looking uh, at a single probe. It could be a single probe air measurement station. Uh, this is insertion mount, and it's a NEMA 1 rated enclosure. Uh, uh, this is also the user interface. Uh, when you have a primary probe with a display yes, uh, this is what you're going to get. Uh, this is our standard uh, when no options are selected. The um, other uh, option we've got is remote wired primary. And this is the very same primary without the probe. Uh, and so uh, if this works right, it goes. So no difference in terms of what the primary interface is. It's just uh, same primary without the probe. As I mentioned, this would be the closest replacement for an existing transmitter box with the probes. Um, the uh, remote wired primary shifts loose. Uh, and your air measurement station would be made up of all ancillary probes. Uh, the probes must be installed and wired by the installing contractor. Uh, and uh, we do not provide the wire to go from the air measurement station to the primary because we don't know where the primary is going to be. And it can be located up to 500 feet away from the air measurement station. And again, non-proprietary, uh, simple, twisted, shielded pair uh, suitable for Modbus uh, type uh, communications or our uh, Connect Air wire that we recommend in our installation manual uh, would be just fine. So we're no longer limited to the length of vendor supplied cables with say a maximum of 50 feet. Uh, now the remote wired primary can be installed in the operations room or next to the automations interface or wherever it's uh, easier to see and access. The um, LCD display is uh, menu driven by the five push buttons on the cover of the primary probe to accomplish lots of things. Uh, for example, you can change the units uh, from uh, feet per minute, uh, meters per second, um, meters per hour. Um, uh, you can do all of that. You can change between standard air or actual airflow. You can switch between metric or uh, imperial inch pounds. So uh, this is where we input the size, the shape, uh, or the area. We also uh, put in the uh, elevation when measuring standard air. Um, it also has the ability to activate an output test function uh, to help commission and troubleshoot the connections with the building automation system. This is a really nice feature that allows you to set the output at uh, 0, 25, 50, 75, or 100%. Um, you can also scale the uh, velocity milliamp output signal such that 20 milliamps is equal to the max expected uh, airflow instead of the uh, factory default, which is um, 5,000 feet per minute or uh, 5,000 times whatever your square foot opening is CFM. So um, again, you can get a lot greater resolution by changing that and much, much more. Um, see, um, the, we have a online technical bulletin on our webpage that we were looking at there earlier and it's a 48 page manual that explains the features and functions of all those features. So uh, lots of things that you can do with this, uh, this great product. Um, you all are familiar with the transmitter box as a separate box that's connected to the cables. Um, each probe is wired directly to the transmitter box with its own cables. That's what you've had in the past, something that looked like this. Um, and then the cables were available in fixed lengths and you had to order the length that you needed prior to placing your order. So lots of 50 foot cables out there coiled up around things. Um, the transmitter box also has the display which uh, is used to show the uh, airflow and the temperature and can be used to access the menu and the features, et cetera. This is the user interface. That's what we're talking about when we say user interface. So we bring 24 volt power to the transmitter, connect it to the building automation system, and that's what a transmitter box is. This is the interface point for the building automation system. So with the, the new TDP 05K, um, we have, as I mentioned, no longer have a transmitter box. We have a primary and an ancillary. So uh, another one of the features then of our primary, which um, uh, replaces the, as I said, the transmitter box, you now have a primary, um, is the ability to order the uh, primary without a display. 
And so uh, displeting, deleting the user interface uh, from the primary probe uh, does not make it an ancillary probe. It's still the automation interface point. It's still the point that connects with uh, the, the, the automation system. Um, and the primary is where you would hook up your 4 to 20 milliamp signal or your, your back net interface point. Um, we recommend the no display option for, say, an underfloor system or maybe you have a really high duct work um, where you know it's not going to be possible or convenient to climb up there or stand on your head to look at the display. So in those cases, there's no real good reason to have the display on the, uh, on the primary probe. And in those cases, as I said, you can either order remote wired primary or you can get a remote wired remote display. And so the wired remote display is the graphic user interface. And um, I'll have more on what I'm talking about there in, in just a minute. To elaborate just a little bit more on this wiring and make sure that you're all aware of what you're going to get when it shows up on site, the, uh, we uh, are using and providing the, the cable, the interconnect wire that goes from probe to probe um, when you have more than one probe uh, for an air measurement station. So the, the factory makes up those cables for you and your installing contractor, all he has to do is plug them in. So uh, these uh, Phoenix connectors are already on the end of the wire and all they gotta do is connect them to the ports as shown on the inside of the cover and also in the instruction manual. Um, when uh, <clears throat> uh, each uh, enclosure, a primary or an ancillary, has uh, two sets of connections to make it easy to go from probe to probe to probe. Um, and so uh, that's a big advantage of Ruskin over other brands uh, is that uh, that wiring is provided. And the other thing is, is that it's a, a daisy chain type wiring. Uh, you don't have to pull all the wires back to a central location. So one small twisted shielded wire versus multiple wires with a big plug on the end of each of those wires uh, uh, that, that can't be removed. So this uh, greatly reduces the cost of installation and simplifies the work required. Because a lot of times those, uh, the, if you're doing a, a conduit installation, it, uh, the conduit's got to be you know, one inch or something in order to fit all of those plugs through the through the through the, the conduit back to the back to the location where the transmitter box is. So again, we don't have a transmitter box. We've made it a better mousetrap here. Um, so to make this work, um, you can bring the uh, power into any one of the probes, and the cables that we provide from the factory will energize the other probes. So power doesn't have to go to the primary, it could go to any one of the ancillaries, which either one, uh, whichever one is easier to get to. And then the uh, primary uh, doesn't have to be at the top or the bottom or any particular place uh, in the lineup. Uh, so uh, just a word here about the uh, enclosures. Um, every enclosure starts out as a NEMA 4 enclosure and then we pre-drill the uh, holes uh, and the available uh, positions where a conduit or wire could go in or out. And then we plug that hole with a NEMA 1 hole, uh, hole plug. Uh, and uh, when the NEMA 4 option is selected, we just simply take out the NEMA 1 hole plugs and we put in NEMA 4 hole plugs. Uh, then at that point, it's up to the installing contractor to make the appropriate connections and, uh, that would maintain the NEMA 4 rating using uh, liquid tight conduit connections, uh, or you could use uh, the NEMA 4 cord grips that we provide. The cord grips we have are uh, NEMA 4 rated to prevent moisture from uh, getting into the enclosure. Uh, this is what the uh, primary box looks like inside. The gray ribbon cable makes the connections with the display and the keypad on the cover. And then um, you can freeze this presentation on the screen and study the connections or reference the installation manual for this same information. Um, hopefully that makes it easy to hook up. Um, if this glossary of terms here has uh, uh, describing the features isn't clear at this point or if I further confuse the issue, uh, please type in your questions in the chat box now so I can address it. 
uh, if you're thinking it, um, others are too. So uh, there's, like you said, no no dumb questions. So please let me know what you what you're thinking, and if I haven't covered everything, uh, let me know. The um, uh, ancillary probe is. Um, there we go. That's ancillary probe has the same circuit board as the primary board with fewer components. Uh, but you'll notice that there's no analog outputs, so there's nothing here on the, the left side, and there's no BACnet interface on an ancillary probe. Uh, so you, you cannot have a display on an ancillary probe, <clears throat> uh, and um, uh, uh, the LCD user interface is only available uh, on the primary or the primary uh, probe. The uh, thing that we've got though that is really nice is the remote display. So a display, not a, not a primary, remote display option duplicates all the functions, the menu functions, the menu controls of the primary probe. Uh, the remote display is wired to the primary and it's possible to have both the display on the primary probe and this uh, remote uh, either wired up to 500 feet away or wireless up to 200 feet away from the primary probes or the primary's location. Uh, it would always be on the probe at that point if you're doing it this way. The primary probe is available as I mentioned with or without a display. Uh, the wired remote is what we recommend anytime the uh, primary is ordered without a display. Uh, and again, can't overemphasize this to keep it straight in your mind. The primary is the interface point for the automation, regardless of where it's located. The uh, last thing here we're looking at is the uh, uh, remote. These are the connections on the inside of the remote uh, display, the, and um, as such, the remote display has all the connections in the lid, and so just a quick recap here of what all these things um, look like, and so stand by here as I go through that. There you go. So this is our standard. If no options are selected, you're going to get a, at least a primary probe, and if um, more than one probe is required for your air measurement station, the rest of those probes will be uh, ancillary probes. Um, as an option, you can order the uh, remote primary, uh, and I call it remote wired primary, uh, and in this case, you're looking at a remote wired primary uh, with three ancillary probes. Um, Another option here is to get a wired remote display and a primary probe with a display. In this case, we have a primary, two ancillaries, and a remote wired display is what you're looking at. Uh, another option here is to get the wired remote display, primary probe without a display, and two ancillary probes is what this makeup would be here. So the automation interface would be this top probe in this case, but again, it could be any of the three, and then it would be wired to the uh, remote display and also wired to the building automation system. Um, wireless uh, allows us to make a uh, uh, no wire connection between the primary and wherever the remote display is. As I mentioned, the remote display just gives you the ability to do everything uh, that you could do on the primary. You can now do remotely, with the remote uh, wireless display. So in this case, you're looking at uh, a primary with uh, two ancillary probes and the uh, wireless option. And lastly, we could provide the uh, wireless remote display without a uh, display on the primary. So here you're getting a, a two ancillary probes as well. So that's uh, just a quick recap of um, all of those features and options and ways to order that. So we've got the right combination that'll work for what you need for your particular project. Um, the internal mount is a solution that's required um, 
uh, anytime you've got, uh, uh, well, insertion won't work um, or standoff won't work. And that's uh, generally because you're dealing with some uh, concrete uh, shaft work or something of that nature or steel beams. So the um, internal mount probe, uh, when you order that option, it always comes with a remote wired primary because if you think about it, primary can't be inside of the ductwork. It wouldn't be very useful. It's impossible to get in the duct to push the buttons or the user interface. There's no access to it to make your connections with the automation. So bad place to put it. That's why it's a remote wired primary when you select internal mount. Uh, multiple probes are wired either directly to the remote uh, uh, wired primary or to a junction box uh, on the outside of the on the outside of the the duct single uh, twisted pair as I mentioned is um, how this is put together this is a picture of what the uh, in, in internal mount looks like um, so uh, when you order this, um, you simply order the inside duct dimensions that are required. It'll have the same number of probes and sensors as an insertion mount probe of the same size. Uh, in actuality, it's uh, 4.75 inches shorter, but you don't need to know that. You only need to order it. The uh, internal uh, width of the duct is what's critical because that's the length we build the probes in. Um, that solves the problem, like I said, when we got concrete shafts or steel beams or some way you just can't get it in. I touched earlier on the new um, Airflow IQ series combining Ruskin's uh, TDP 05K with a damper. Uh, and so this is a, a, a great assembly that we've got. You're looking at here is the uh, AIQ TD50. Um, What's interesting here, um, air measurement, when you're doing uh, air measurement in close proximity to the damper is always combined with a parallel blade damper. Uh, opposed blade uh, has the possibility of causing some upstream effects. It kind of works like a funneling. And that's because we're less than, uh, as we mentioned, six inches away. This, this sleeves only uh, 15 inches deep in the direction of airflow. So we're pretty darn close, but we've done the testing to prove that this will work with a parallel blade damper. Uh, we can factory mount any brand of modulating actuator or, uh, as I mentioned, the installing contractor can provide his uh, uh, actuator of their choice. Um, the AIQ TD50 is the first of our airflow series, and it's available today with any of the Ruskin control dampers uh, similarly configured. For example, uh, the AIRIQ TD60, same product in a galvanized steel sleeve, and this is made in uh, Parsons, Kansas. So what we've got here, the um, AIQ TD50C, uh, when you order it with the C, uh, that includes the Ruskin air measurement actuator. Uh, this as the controls, similar to our IEQ50X, um, it replaces our EMS 050 and EMS 060 electronic air measurement stations. And it's uh, also uh, going to replace the AMS 070V controller on our AMS uh, 050 products. So uh, the air measurement station, the air measurement actuator supports either velocity, pressure, or electronic air measurements. Uh, more on that in a minute. Uh, for the Ruskin representatives on the call today, this actuator can be selected in your edge pricing program uh, with the CD50 or CD60 single section dampers uh, when the sleeve is sliced, sized correctly and the uh, installation location for the actuator is out of the airstream. The um, other neat thing is uh, this does not require a separate control box. The controller is built into the actuator and interfaces uh, directly uh, with the, the automation system. Uh, it supports two operating modes, uh, either flow control based on a CFM set point. Uh, under flow control, it has a built-in uh, PI control loop. And uh, again, you give it the set point and it gets to it pretty darn quick. Um, You'd command that via the BACnet interface. 
uh, and then also via the BACnet interface, you can toggle from uh, flow control to direct position control. Uh, position control is just uh, taking over control of the damper and commanding it, uh, for example, driving it full open or full closed uh, as required, <clears throat> or, command, or, or maybe uh, uh, in economizer mode, just moving the damper to achieve a mixed air temperature, for example. Um, uh, building purge operations or um, uh, closing the damper when the building is unoccupied, all easy to do just by switching to flow control. Um, what you'll see on the actuator's built-in web server is accessed by plugging in an Ethernet cable directly into the actuator. And you'd use a laptop with uh, Google Chrome, you'd log on uh, to the server, um, and the installing contractor uses this screen to configure the air measurement station for their system and set the BACnet address, the baud rate, and um, uh, those features that are required to make it work with their system. So uh, that's how that works. Uh, the, the, the BACnet points that you'll see uh, on, the, uh, on the BACnet interface, there's actually uh, 12 data points that are out there, but uh, briefly they're this, the set point the uh, airflow CFM, the velocity, uh, damper position, actuator status. Um, actuator status, and actually if you have uh, the control signal uh, go away, the set point signal go away, uh, or drop to less than two volts, it, uh, it disables the actuator and drives it closed. Uh, that's a feature for uh, freeze protection. Pretty, pretty cool how that works. And as I mentioned, flow or position control can be toggled back and forth directly over the, over the, the BACnet interface. All right, the um, next thing here, I was mentioning that the um, uh, velocity pressure solution, and that's gonna be our AIQ VP uh, uh, 50C with all the same features as the TD series. Uh, only difference here is that we're using it with the AMS 050. So um, again, uh, works the exact same way. It's just that the actuator has um, all the um, uh, KA factors, et cetera, uh, built into it to where it reads the uh, voltage from the low pressure transducer and turns that into an air measurement. Uh, again, this replaces the controller. Uh, there's no other box. It's the, uh, we do provide a junction box, but I mean, there's not a separate control box. We provide a junction box to make it easy to hook up your wires. Um, and this would work for CDRMS or the, uh, if you have a round air measurement application or for the AMS 050 uh, with this actuator. Uh, for an analog interface, we use the DPT IQ in order to use um, analog ins and analog outs. So don't know if I've been talking too fast or time just flies when you're having fun, but uh, pretty much been through everything that I wanted to cover today. And we've got about uh, five minutes here where I can address uh, some more of your concerns. So again, if you have some questions, uh, I'm gonna see if we can get to some of those right now. And this would be a, a great time to uh, uh, type that in and I'll see how many of those I can get to. Um, so one second here. There we go. Trying to get the questions where I can see them. Um, but first of all, tell you that the, uh, uh, in, in conclusion here, the, the TDP-05K is available with uh, any number of options to meet the requirements for your project. Um, our new online placement tool helps you locate the right position for the probes to be inserted in the duct. And uh, again, it has a really neat feature that shows you how many probes and sensors are provided with any uh, given size uh, opening as a default. You can always uh, get get more than that or, or, or less as possible also. But that's uh, the good information. Uh, internal mounted probe is always provided uh, with a remote wired primary for reasons previously explained. The uh, Airflow IQ TD and TD50 series and the uh, uh, TD50C combining uh, electronic air measurement with a damper and uh, built-in controls and BACnet interface. So 
great, great uh, opportunity there uh, and uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous product. And then next up in our IQ series, we'll be talking about the, um, uh, I touched on it briefly here, but the uh, Air IQ VP uh, 50C series using uh, velocity pressure air measurement uh, as, and uh, the BACnet interface. So um, there'll be a um, replay available on uh, YouTube after this. So if I, uh, you want to share this with your customers, please feel free to send them that uh, YouTube link uh, after our uh, presentation here. Um, there's um, questions here pertaining to um, uh, some uh, pointing out actually uh, that some of our um, want to tell you that we've got uh, uh, some uh, other videos uh, on our website that are uh, uh, convenient uh, or help explain some of the features and functions that that maybe uh, I didn't cover. Um, so lastly, um, there was a question here pertaining to, you know, how many uh, how many data points are we calibrating uh, these units? And I would say that they're they're calibrated at uh, 20 points at the factory. So we've got out of the box accuracy with these units. When they arrive, we spent quite a bit of time uh, calibrating them before we send them to you. And then uh, temperature is now one of those uh, reference points as well. So uh, uh, thanks for the questions there. Um, I think that uh, pretty much sums it up. And uh, please uh, feel free to uh, email uh, any uh, additional questions that uh, you come up with uh, to my email address. I'll uh, leave this uh, webinar open uh, after the, the presentation, but this, uh, for all practical purposes, concludes our presentation today. Again, I wanted to thank you for taking the time out of your schedules to, to be here, to be with us, and uh, to learn about this product. We really appreciate that. And thank you for specifying and using Ruskin. Um, and if you've got comments about this, please uh, include those as well. Uh, our next webinar will be uh, Wednesday, September 12th, uh, same time, 2.30 uh, Central Standard Time. And uh, for that presentation, we'll be talking about automatic uh, balancing damper solutions. Thank you. This concludes the webinar.